This is News 8 Now, this morning. Well, you know, at Organic Valley, we've got 1,600 small family farms as part of our cooperative. And so June Dairy Month is really important to us because it's a time to pause and celebrate all the great work that they're doing. What the dredging will do is increase the depth and provide overwintering habitat for, for fish. So that is something that is sorely needed on the lake. Yeah, and for the fourth, we're not going to require a button this year. Uh, so with it being our 40th anniversary, we want to try to get as many people down here to celebrate with us. Good morning, everyone, and that was your morning eye opener. I'm Jeremy Wall. And I'm Derek Sibley. It is Tuesday, June 27th, 2023. Are we really only a week away from July 4th, Derek? Yeah, it's insane, right? About to enter July. <laughs> yeah, I was telling Greg yesterday, I still can't get over the, uh, the turnover from Memorial Day to July 4th. It's it, crazy to think that there's really only mm. a five-week difference between them, almost how there's only about a four-week difference between yeah. Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yeah, it's insane, right? So yeah, so we got some holidays to, to, to come up here, and we're also going to be dealing with the possibility of seeing some thunderstorms. I don't really think it's going to spoil the 4th of July holidays and that's a little bit too far out anyway to kind of tell at this point. But I think for the majority of those storm chances they are going to be coming here over these next few days. Let's talk about some of these air quality alerts. However, this is in effect until noon on Thursday and that is from the Canadian wildfire smoke causing some of these unhealthy conditions for those sensitive groups. So if you happen to fall into the sensitive group category, make sure to limit your time outside, spend more time inside. And if you're going to be outside here over these next few days, make sure to take those frequent breaks. Our current temperatures are into the 50s for the most part, 54 in Eau Claire and 58 in La Crosse. We do have a clear sky uh, despite the haze outside though, so just something to keep in mind. And the haze that you see now is going to really just continue throughout the day. Our skies, however, as far as our weather is concerned, will be mostly sunny, but again, it will be on the hazy side with seasonable temperatures into the 80s this afternoon. Your allergy report shows that the grass is medium, pine is low, mold is on the medium side for today, and tomorrow that grass and pine is actually going to turn low here. Stay tuned, I'll have a check on your backyard forecast, plus what we can expect in your full weather forecast coming up in a few minutes. Jeremy? Thanks, Derek. Let's get to some news this morning. There's new information about the human remains found in the Mississippi River last Tuesday. The La Crosse County Sheriff says the body has gone through an initial exam at Mayo Clinic in Rochester and will be seen again by a forensic anthropologist. The sheriff says the man's body may have been in the river for roughly five years. Authorities say the person could have been a hunter. A release noted the body had a distinctive piece of jewelry. Authorities hope the jewelry plus signs of the person being a hunter will help them identify the man. Lacrosse is one step closer to getting a food hall. The LAX food hall's business owners announced on Facebook that they officially got their building permit from the state last week. News 8 Now's Emily Haugen explains what's next. It all starts with a dream. I was like, yeah, I like lacrosse a lot. It's a great place to raise kids, but I really miss a lot of things from Chicago and St. Louis. Michael Margulis's dream was to bring something he missed to lacrosse, a food hall with 11 different vendors right downtown. The food hall concept, it solves a lot of issues. He's teamed up with his friend Zachary Switzer to bring people more choices. For the two, it's a dream that's hit a few snags along the way. Just been a story of a bunch of delays. They submitted their building permit last year, but Margulis said it went missing. We had them resubmit it. Eventually, it moved through the state, then the city. We eventually came to an agreement that the city and the state could both support. After a 16 month uh, journey, we uh, have our permits, which is wonderful. Now, permits in hand, they're ready to go. It's a huge relief. Um, we're glad to finally get stuff like moving on like the actual walls. Right now, all that's finished is a bar. Each day you walk by and today there's a wall where there wasn't yesterday. But the business owners have big plans. There'll be a restaurant or a kitchen built into each one of those on both floors. Realizing their dream of layout and vendors. The best of what their cities have to offer, we're cherry picking our favorites out of them. In Lacrosse, Emily Haugen, News 8 Now. 
The owners say now that they've cleared the permit hurdle, they're looking for workers to help transform the space. They also are searching for three more vendors, mainly pizza, burgers, and wings. Mar Margolis says we know we could know an opening date as soon as next week. June is National Dairy Month to celebrate Governor Tony Evers visited Organic Valley's Chaseburg Creamery. Evers and Organic Valley leaders say it's important to recognize the farmers who provide the state economy billions of dollars. Well, you know, at Organic Valley, we've got 1,600 small family farms as part of our cooperative. And so June Dairy Month is really important to us because it's a time to pause and celebrate all the great work that they're doing. Frank says Chaseburg Creamery services around 400 farms in the area, bringing in around 4.5 million pounds of milk per week. On Alaska's Parks and Rec Department is considering several ways to revamp the city's community center. The city's Parks and Rec Director says the board wants to turn the center into a multi-generational facility. The building was built in 1974 and is the city's most heavily rented space on weekends. The city set aside roughly $500,000 in this year's city's budget to get a design plan going on the facility. The city could decide to remodel the existing building, add restrooms, or even build a new gymnasium. The city doesn't have any indoor uh, gymnasium space in the winter months and so trying to find a space that really could be utilized uh, you know 12 months a year uh, by multi multiple generations we just like to try to find a space that we can manage and you know that we the seniors can use in the mornings and we can use it from a lot of our recreational programs in the afternoons the board didn't decide on a course of action yet they'll present plans to common council next month who will discuss future funding options from there there's a community effort to help create better habitats along Lake on Alaska's shores, as well as give boaters access to buildings on the water. The Bryce Prairie Conservation Association is working on a plan to dredge the lake near Red Pines Bar and Grill. The project would clear the way for boats as well as create animal habitats. What the dredging will do is increase the depth and provide overwintering habitat for, for fish. So that is something that is sorely needed on the lake. The project would also create a sediment trap which would give fish a place to lay eggs. The association's goal is to raise $200,000 for the project. We'll have a link to donate on our website. Many kids dream of becoming a firefighter or a police officer. One Sparta man spent his life dreaming of riding in an ambulance. His dream has been serving a community for nearly 50 years. News 8 Now's Dua Isora introduces us to our June hometown heroes. Before your pager went off, you knew. There are things in a community you don't think twice about. I will tell you, I think this has been Bob's dream from the time he was young. They're just there. When we came here, we said we wanted a family business, that we were going to be hands-on, and we were going to be here for the community. Bob and Linda Hess's family business isn't your typical storefront. Volunteer search and rescue group, which got me interested in ambulance. The Hesses are responsible for a life-saving measure in Sparta's community. It's the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows. In the 60s and 70s, ambulances were often operated by funeral homes and police departments. You know, back then, um, ambulance wasn't really a career. The city of Sparta made a decision to turn its ambulance service into a separate entity. <laughs> the first people to operate it were the Hesses. We met in January, engaged in May, married in August and came to Sparta to take over the ambulance service in November. In the 80s, this is actually was our, one of our first defibrillators. From there, the small ambulance service grew. Actually, we got a group of about 12 people to help us out, so we actually got a day off. For Bob and Linda, the family business is about hope. They heard that siren and they knew that help was coming. They're the bridge between a person in need and a hospital. In my world, they're the biggest heroes because they gave people the chance to live and help others then too. So you get the patient loaded. For nearly 50 years. And then you head for the hospital as fast as you humanly could. These helpers with big hearts have made sure their community has someone to rely on. You don't get rich. Uh, you don't have power or influence. It's just you see you're helping people that need it the most. Reporting in Sparta, Duesrar. News 8 now. Last year, 3,000 calls were made to Sparta Area Ambulance. Bob and Linda say while they don't ride in the ambulance anymore, they're still there to pick up every one of those calls. 
The setup for a lacrosse tradition is underway in Riverside Park. Riverfest kicks off later this week, and volunteers have started getting the area ready for, fr for Friday. Festival attendees can look forward to live music, fireworks, and beer and food stands. There will also be a gaming truck with virtual reality simulators and the latest games from Xbox and PlayStation. To celebrate Riverfest hitting a milestone anniversary this year, organizers say they're opening the fest to everyone. Yeah, and for the fourth, we're not going to require a button this year. Uh, so with it being our 40th an anniversary, we want to try to get as many people down here to celebrate with us. Entry on the 4th will be free to the public. Riverfest is a five day celebration this year. The opening ceremonies will start Friday at 11 in the morning. A heads up for swimmers in lacrosse. The city's Parks and Rec Department has announced that the Northside Community Pool is back open. The pool will resume their regular operation hours from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. And still ahead on your morning news, we'll have the details on another frozen fruit recall. This time it's for pineapple. And we take a look at the destinations that welcome LGBTQ plus, plus, LGBTQ plus travelers and those that don't. That and more coming up this morning. But for now, we're sending you this break with something to put the good in your morning. NASA astronomers say they may have made a key discovery in space. The James Webb Space Telescope has found a crucial carbon molecule in space for the first time. The discovery was made in a star system nearly 1,350 light years away in the Orion, Orion Nebula. Scientists say the discovery is important because carbon is part of the foundation for life. Researchers hope the find will help determine whether or not there is life outside of Earth. Don't go anywhere. Your consumer news at News 8 Now this morning is after the break. Air quality alerts continue here across much of the Cooley region, mainly east here of the Mississippi River across western Wisconsin until noon on a Thursday. We're still dealing with that Canadian wildfire smoke here, once again affecting our skies, creating the haziness that you're seeing outside right now. And that in turn is also creating unhealthy conditions for those of you that may fall under those sensitive groups. Now, our current temperatures as you head out the door are mainly in the 50s. We got 54 in Eau Claire now. Temperatures in uh, La Crosse a little bit warmer, though, however, at 58 degrees. And as you take a look at your dog walking conditions, we will be looking at a nice day here. And right now, things are starting off that way. We have clear skies across the area, and our zone forecast for today is going to call for our highs to be reaching the low to mid 80s this afternoon, with that high of 85 expected in Berry Mills and 84 in Mindoro. And as we head south, Soldiers Grove, you're looking at a high of 84. Lansing today, 83. Caledonia to the west at 81. Highs reaching the low to mid 80s across our central zones today, with 84 in Whitehall and north into the Chippewa Valley today, you're looking at highs around 84 degrees, especially for those of you in Eau Claire with just a few passing clouds. And that's pretty much in the forecast overall today. If you're going to be out poolside, 85 degrees with partly cloudy conditions here uh, during the day or 85, I should say, for La Crosse, though. Now, stay tuned. I'll have a check on your full weather forecast. We'll talk about some of these upcoming rain chances that we could be looking at as we head into tomorrow evening and tomorrow night. <laughs> In your consumer news this morning, you may want to check your freezers again. There is a new recall on frozen or frozen organic pineapple. Scenic Fruit Company says their organic tropical fruit blend with pineapple may have been contaminated with listeria. The new recall comes as Sunrise Growers also have announced a recall on their frozen fruit products for listeria as well. The frozen pineapple was sold from trade was sold at Trader Joe's stores across the country. The FDA advises if you find this product throw it away or return it to the store for a full refund. Honda is recalling 1.2 million vehicles because the rear view camera images may not appear on the dashboard screen, increasing the risk of crash and injury. The recall covers the 2019 to 2022 Pilot, 2019 to 2023 Passport SUVs, and Odyssey minivan models from 2018 to 2023. The company blames a faulty cable connection, which dealers will fix for free of charge. Ordering a pizza used to require an address, but not anymore. Domino's has announced that they are launching an anywhere delivery service. The new service will allow customers to choose a location by just dropping a pin on a map. The pizza chain says the service will be starting this summer. When the driver arrives at the delivery location, the driver will have a visual sign on their phone to help find the customer. As Pride Month winds down, this week's Travel Tuesday focuses on LGBTQ travelers. As a group, they have money to spend and are a lucrative part of the industry. But many in the LGBTQ commun community still struggle for acceptance in some countries. Wendy Gillett has the details. 
Hannes Sassi Polson and Eva Maria Lange own the travel agency Pink Iceland, based in Reykjavik. I think um, LGBTQ people love traveling in Iceland. It feels safe, you're celebrated. We hate the word tolerated. That's not what we do here. Iceland invites LGBTQ tourists to enjoy its active volcanoes, glaciers, Icelandic horses, and thermal baths. There's even a rainbow flag painted on a street in the capital. The country is tapping into a lucrative travel segment with an estimated $218 billion in spending power before the pandemic. The LGBTQ market is so large, there's now an annual international conference dedicated to it called Proud Experiences, held this year in Los Angeles. The city laid out a rainbow-colored red carpet for the event, which brought together travel professionals from 40 countries. Event director Simon Mayo says it's an opportunity to learn more about attracting LGBTQ travelers and avoiding simple mistakes that can alienate guests. The check-in experience, uh, being questioned about double bed versus two single beds. They, they may have a welcome note that's addressed to Mr. and Mrs. or Senor and Senora. There are also nations that are explicitly anti-LGBTQ. Laws in 64 countries criminalize homosexuality. And in 11, the death penalty is possible. We saw this year that Uganda passed a law where it's illegal to even identify as LGBTQ, um, which is just shocking in our day and age. But Mayo says the future is an even stronger stronger community with almost a third of millennials identifying as LGBTQ. LGBTQ travelers typically spend more than other groups. One study shows they total about 8% of tourists in Los Angeles, but make up about 20% of the overall spending. That's it for your morning consumer news. Let's check in with Derek and today's forecast. Derek. For that, Jeremy, air quality alerts continue here for Wisconsin and also in portions for our viewing area here in western Wisconsin until noon on Thursday, particularly from the wildfire smoke that is still creating unhealthy conditions for the sensitive groups. If you happen to fall into that category, make sure to limit yourself outside here. Spend more time inside. And if you have to be out there, make sure to take those frequent breaks because as you can see, smoke trackers showing that northerly wind breeze here right now, and that is dragging all that uh, wildfire smoke, creating some of the hazy conditions that you see outside to move through the Cooley region throughout the morning. And this will continue as we head into this afternoon. Maybe not as thick here this afternoon and also into tonight. But once we get that return flow of that south wind, that's going to help pull the smoke right back over us as we head into tomorrow uh, throughout the day tomorrow, really in general. And then once again, as we head into Thursday too. City Cam H showing a pretty hazy start outside this morning from La Crosse. And as we take a look, look at those current conditions in La Crosse, our temperatures are currently at 58 degrees. East northeast winds at five. 4.87 feet is, is our current river stage. Meanwhile, to the north in Eau Claire, you're at 56 degrees. North northeast winds light at two miles an hour. And our current temperatures across the area, mainly into the 50s as well. We got 55 in Broqua, 56 degrees as the temperature down in Basquiatville. Underneath, mainly clear skies here across the area as well, thanks to high pressure and control. Despite the hazy conditions, our weather will be remaining mainly sunny throughout the day, 77 at noon, followed by 83 degrees around 4 o'clock today, with our highs expected to reach the mid 80s though come this afternoon. Now as of right now things are quiet here again thanks to high pressure and control. We're watching a weak trough of low pressure though back towards the west which is expected to increase our moisture leading to some cloud development here a little bit especially as we head into tonight though we expect some of those increasing clouds to take shape with a slight chance of a shower possible a slight chance of a shower as we head into tomorrow morning but for the most part just looking at a mix of sun and clouds while I think the rain will stay mainly to our north. However I am watching again that that developing system here back to the west, which could cause some showers and thunderstorms to take shape as we head into tomorrow evening and also into tomorrow night. Now, by early Thursday, I am expecting that activity to clear out, maybe a slight chance of a shower to the south, mix of sun and clouds as we head into Thursday afternoon. I am watching for more showers and thunderstorms, however, to move in by Thursday afternoon before dissipating as we head into Thursday night. And because some of those thunderstorms could turn strong to severe for tomorrow night between 7 p.m. to 3 a.m., there is a level Level one marginal risk in place for the majority of the area, a level two slight risk in effect for our western communities. Heavy rain, gusty winds, and some hail will be the primary threats with any thunderstorm that does develop. Here's a check on that eight-day forecast. We'll keep some of those storm chances in the forecast through Friday. Highs in the upper 80s, low 90s, lows in the 60s. Stay with us. We're back with much more news and weather still to come on News 8 Now this morning. We're taking a quick break for now with a look what happened on the state in history for June 27th. We'll be right back.
Welcome to the Blitz. Brewers and Mets beginning a four game set last night in New York. We'll get to that in just a bit, but we'll start on the diamond in lacrosse with a couple of area legion teams going head to head for two. Let's go to Copeland Park for the nightcap lacrosse post 52 taking on Holman. Pitchers duel early on. Bottom two, Dalen Haney gives this one a ride to right, but Aiden Boylan makes the grab. We're scoreless through two. Top three, runner on second for Holman. Tough play for Lucas Eilertsen, but a great throw from third. Gets post 52 out of trouble. Bottom three now, runner on third for lacrosse. Calvin Hargrove chops it to third. Nice play by Hayden Goodell to end the threat. Scoreless through three, but in the fourth, Holman loads the bases and Tyrus McCoy comes up big. Look at the hustle down the line. Hard 90 from McCoy, beats it out at first. Post 284 gets on the board, it's 1-0. And Holman not done later in the inning. Boylan going the other way, that's down for a base hit. Holman puts up a four spot in the inning. Post 284 sweeps the doubleheader. They get the win in game two by a final of five to nothing. Down the road, West Salem post 51, hosting Sparta post 100. Sparta leading 1-0 with David Fabry on the mound, and he was dealing. West Salem threatening in the second, but Fabry with back-to-back -back K's ends the inning. Sparta still in front. Later in the game, West Salem playing some small ball. Cole Everson lays down the bunt. Fabry throws him out at first, but the sacrifice works to perfection. Now they've got a man on third. Very next batter, Chris Calico at the play. He lines one in a center field for a base hit. That's going to score a run. We're all tied up. Later in the game, go ahead, run on third. My guy Jesse comes up big. He sends one to deep left field. Should be deep enough to score a run. And it is. West Salem takes the lead. They hold on for the win. Two to one. Loggers on the road last night, opening up a two-game set in Waterloo, and lacrosse hangs on for the win. Six to five as the Loggers win their second straight. Bucks made it interesting late. They scored three in the ninth, but the Loggers survived. They start their four-game road trip off with a W. They'll look to sweep tonight in Waterloo. Big four-game set for the Brewers beginning in New York last night against the Mets. Pick it up in the six. Milwaukee down a run, but not anymore. Mets bullpen blowing it. A shocker, of course, Joey Weimer, man on, crushes one at dead center. Two run shot, puts the Brewers on top. And that was more than enough. Devin Williams gets the Mets one, two, three in the ninth. But the story in this one was Colin Ray. Six and a third, just three hits allowed. Brewers open the series with the win. They take it by a final of two to one. Twins looking for their second straight win, taking on the Braves. Scoreless in the second until Joey Gallo jumps all over this fastball from Spencer Strider. Straight away center field and gone for a solo shot. Gallo gets the Twins on the board, but the Braves, they're red hot. And in the seventh, Marcelo Zuna puts Atlanta on top. He goes the other way for a solo blast, makes it 2-1 Braves. And then Ronald Acuna Jr. adds to it later in the inning. A man on, Acuna unloads to left center. A no doubt two run shot puts Atlanta up three. Twins fall in the series opener, four to one. And finally on the hardwood, many eyes are on GET senior Cody Schmidt. He did it all for the Red Hawks last season, the Cooley Conference Player of the Year. Averaged more than 29 points a game during his junior season. And yesterday, Schmidt's announcing on Twitter that he's received a scholarship offer to play basketball at Northern Michigan University. It's been a roller coaster of an offseason for Schmitz. Back in early April, he suffered a Jones fracture in his left foot during his first AAU tournament. But the senior was back on the court earlier this month. It looks like he's going to be more than ready for a big senior season at GET. That's going to do it for the Blitz. We'll see you tonight. Thank you for watching News 8 Now. Expect more. Welcome back. Minnesota is getting federal funded for broadband. Senators A.B. Klobuchar and Tina Smith announced the state will get more than $650 million through the bipartisan infrastructure law for high-speed Internet projects. Funds will first go to areas of the state that need broadband, broadband connections the most. Often rural areas, the state of Wisconsin is also receiving just over a billion dollars in funds through the Broadband Access and Development Program. The federal program was established to expand high-speed Internet to unserved areas. It's part of the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which President Biden signed in 2021. One Wisconsin congressman says it's essential to bring affordable Internet access to parts of the state where there's no broadband infrastructure in place. These days, having broadband is like having water or electricity in your home. You absolutely have to have it. 20% of the funding will be awarded through grants by 2024. By 2025, the remaining 80% of the funding will be handed out. Projects are expected to finish by 2030.
It's been over two weeks since a 13 year old boy went missing near Devil's Lake State Park. As the Saw County Sheriff cuts back on search efforts, his family is picking up the slack. Braden Ross from our sister station WISC TV has the story. It's now been two weeks since 13 year old James Gablonski first went missing here in Sauk County near Devil's Lake State Park. But for the family and the dozens of people out searching for him today, hope is not lost. I think it's impressive. We have a fair number of people out here. And, uh, it's uh, good to see. Sunday, dozens gathered to search for a missing 13 year old boy who authorities believe may be trying to live off the grid as a survivalist. Family and volunteers combed through the rough terrain near where Yablonski first went missing two weeks ago, looking for any sign of where he could be. Especially after this many days, it's, you know, he could be anywhere, he could be hurt, he could, you know, anything. So your mind just kind of jumps from one scenario to another. Just hope we find some evidence or some, you know, closure to this whole thing. Yablonski's aunt, Mary Wagner, knows all too well what it's like to lose a child without answers. 30 years ago, actually, my daughter, Lori Deppis, disappeared up in the Menasha area. And at that time, I was so grief stricken, I wasn't allowed to search or anything. And so for me, it's kind of a, a longing I've always had is to be able to help to look. So, um, I just had to be here. The Sauk County Sheriff's Office had previously asked the public not to search out of fear they'd push Yablonski further into unfamiliar territory or that someone could get hurt in the process. Yablonski's father didn't want to go on camera, but when I asked him about the sheriff's warnings, his response, they can't stop us. If you have any information that could help find Yablonski, you could contact the Sauk County Sheriff's Office. Well, Governor Evers could have the legislature's draft of the state budget on his desk by the end of the week. The budget calls for a $3.5 billion tax cut that would give the wealthiest earners the largest tax relief, and it could cut the UW system's budget by $32 million. Evers has said before he'd veto the state budget if the UW system faced cuts, but he says there's reasons to be hopeful that won't be the case. They did put that $32 million, it's being retained, so it is not a cut. It's retaining until the uh, university and the, and the Joint Finance Committee can kind of work it out. But at the end of the day, that $32 million is essentially keeping them flat. I mean, there's no way in the world one of the best university systems in the country should be going with no increase. The state Senate is in session tomorrow to vote on the Republican-led proposal with the Assembly following Thursday. Pedestrian-related fatalities increased in Wisconsin from 2021 to 2022. That's according to a report from Wisconsin's Highway Safety Association. The report states 75 people died in 2022 compared to 50 in 2021. And Madison City officials saw a decrease in pedestrian deaths over the same period of time as the governor's report. Despite a decrease in their numbers, they say the job isn't finished yet. But I think because of that, each one really highlights the work that we still have to do. Um, here in our city to ensure that our trend isn't going the same direction as we see in the state. The new numbers make Wisconsin state with the third highest increase in the country during 2022. Many rainbows were at the Greenfield Farmers Market, despite the fact that Greenfield's mayor canceled a planned pride displayed plan for the event. Frank Healy was there and has the story. Unfortunately, the Greenfield mayor decided to cancel the pride celebration here uh, and people got pretty upset about that. 15th District County Supervisor Peter Bergelis spoke through a wired shut jaw Sunday. Wauwatosa police say two weeks ago, Bergelis was punched by a man at the Mayfair Mall over a parking spot. Supervisor Bergelis says the man who punched him called him a homophobic slur before the attack. He says when he called Mayor Jay Knightsky about the cancellation, trying to get him to reverse it, the mayor mentioned the attack as part of why the mayor canceled in the first place. The mayor justified his decision by saying that rainbows and pride is getting political. There's nothing political about sexual orientation. These are, this is people's lives. This is who people are. Supervisor Bergelis was joined by a few dozen members of the LGBTQ plus community and allies. 
I was just very sad um, because I think we've, we have come a far way and then pushback comes and then we have to, you know, push harder and harder. Alice Hatzenbeller says she's lived in Greenfield for over 20 years and frequents the farmer's market. She says for her and her family, the mayor's response was disappointing. Grandson who is trans, um, I've marched in the pride parade. I myself am gay. Um, I believe that we need to show who we are. We're ordinary, normal people. In a statement to CBS 58 News, Mayor Knightsky said, quote, if the day goes without disruptive incidents and is celebratory and safe, then it's a success. I'm glad everyone is enjoying the farmer's market. The people at the event say they wish his response had been different. The mayor owes it to his residents to allow them to be their true authentic selves because that's when you have a stronger community. Alrighty, let's send it over to Derek to tell us what to expect for our morning commute. Derek, how's th how are things looking outside? Yeah, it's looking a little bit on the hazy here side, uh, Jeremy, and uh, you might want to use your low beam headlights if you can, especially for those of you that may be dealing with some of that haze here on your get ready for your morning commute. Air quality alerts are in effect here from the Canadian wildfire smoke that is causing the haze that you're currently seeing outside till noon on Thursday. Our current temperatures are mainly into the 50s. We got 56 to the north in Eau Claire. However, it's currently 58 degrees if you're in La Crosse. Check out our forecast today, 85 degrees, partly cloudy, pretty seasonable. Uh, nice day, really, to say the least, despite the haze. North-northwest winds at 5 to 10. Uh, for tonight, 63, partly cloudy and seasonable. Southeast winds light at 5 to 10 miles an hour. Things are looking pretty clear here as far as our weather is concerned. Uh, maybe just a few passing clouds. But other than that, here's a check now on your mowing forecast. We got 64 degrees to start this morning at 8 o'clock with plenty of sun. And by noon, we're at 77 degrees, followed by 85 degrees around 5 p.m. here this afternoon. Really, any time of the day is good. But again, if you're dealing with those, if you fall into the neath that unhealthy condition, make sure to limit yourself outside and try to knock out the mowing as quickly as possible. But I'll have a check on that full weather forecast coming up in a few minutes. We'll talk about some upcoming rain chances for tomorrow night. Also coming up in our buzz report, you might get the opportunity to visit Ken and uh, stay in Barbie's uh, Malibu Dream House. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Air quality alerts here continue for western Wisconsin until noon on Thursday, and that is still from the Canadian wildfire smoke affecting our skies. That's why it's looking a little bit on the hazy side if you step out the door this morning. So for those of you that fall under that sensitive group category, make sure to limit yourself outside. Try to spend more time inside, but if you have to be outside, make sure to limit yourself out there by taking those frequent breaks when necessary. And you'll see it here on the smoke tracker. As a matter of fact, that northerly wind that we're getting here is creating all that smoke here moving in from the north spreading its way south across the Cooley region. It's expected to stick around here throughout the morning. It may begin to taper here just a little bit as we progress throughout the day into the afternoon, but regardless, it's still going to be pretty hazy throughout the day today and also as we head into tonight. When we get that subtly return flow, we're going to be looking at the smoke coming right back over us as we head into the day tomorrow. So something to be aware about. In fact, it's expected to stick around really throughout uh, Thursday here, it looks like too. City Cam 8 in downtown La Crosse showing some pretty thick haze right now outside and current temperature in La Crosse are at 58 degrees, slightly warmer downtown here at WKBT at 61, light east-northeast winds at 5 miles an hour. Meanwhile, to the north of Eau Claire, we got 56 degrees, light north-northeast winds at around 3 miles an hour. And our current temperatures are mainly into the 50s, 55 degrees the temperature in Winona, Viroqua, you're currently at 56 degrees under mainly clear skies as far as our weather is concerned. And as we take a look now at your planner, we got uh, mostly sunny conditions. So despite the haze, it will be a nice day out with temperatures at 77 at noon, followed by 83 degrees at around 4 o'clock, with forecast highs today expected to rise into the mid-80s come later this afternoon. High pressure is currently in control of our weather. It's a very weak surface high pressure system, creating some nice quiet conditions. However, I am watching a developing trough of low pressure back to the west that may help increase the cloud cover, especially as we head into tonight. There you can see and some showers and a few storms here back to our west. Not really going to make it all the way into the Cooley region as we head into tomorrow morning, but a slight chance of a shower is possible, however. And then as we head into the day tomorrow afternoon, the system's going to continue to evolve, though. You you can see some of those showers and storms back to the west. They're going to continue to develop and spread across the Cooley region. In fact, could turn strong to severe at times, which we'll get to here in a second as we head into tomorrow night and also into early on Thursday morning. But I think around 5 a.m. on Thursday, the majority of those showers and storms should clear the area. The rest of the day Thursday is looking mostly sunny with a mix of sun and clouds before showers and storms move again as we head into Thursday evening and also into Thursday night again. 
So we do have a slight risk of severe weather in effect for the majority of the Cooley region for tomorrow night between 7 p.m. to 3 a.m. Heavy rain, gusty winds and some hail. A level one or a level two slight risk of severe weather highlighted in yellow is in effect for our western community. So something we'll keep our eyes on here as we head throughout the day tomorrow. Now we'll keep those storm chances in effect through Friday and then after that looking at mix of sun and clouds. High temperatures into the upper 80s and low 90s, lows in the 60s. In our morning buzz report, Barbie fans have a chance to stay at a life-size Barbie Malibu dream, dream House for free. Warner Brothers and Airbnb teamed up for the promotion to celebrate the release of the live-action Barbie movie. Ken is taking over the house and putting some of his own touches on the place. Two winners will get an overnight stay on July 21st and 22nd. Each can bring a friend. Starting July 17th, you could go to Airbnb.com slash Ken Dream House to take your chance at one of the bookings. That's Pentatonix member Scott Hoying performing Parallel, the title track from his forthcoming solo EP releasing July 28th. Hoying directed the video on location in Iceland, which co-stars his fiance. Babe, how much did we make today? Five million. How much did we lose today? A billion. And yesterday? Four million. And yesterday? A billion. The, game, the GameStop stock story hits the big screen in dumb money. The first trailer shows ordinary day traders getting rich at the expense of hedge fund billionaires Paul Dano, uh, who leads the all-star cast. The opening bell sounds in theaters for dumb money September 22nd. Actress Angela Bassett is finally getting an Oscar. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences says she and comedy legend Mel Brooks will receive honorary awards this November. These are given to the to people, the board says, that have made exceptional lifetime contributions to the industry. Bassett has two nominations to her name for Best Actress and Best Supporting Actress. But no statue, statuettes. Mel Brooks has a 1968 win for writing the screenplay for the producers. All right, so I know, you know, we've had this discussion before, but would you stay in the Barbie dream house? Look, I'm not going to lie. It looks nice. I just don't know if I could fully get by it, though. You know, how about you? Because, I mean, I feel like it's a little bit too colorful, maybe, <laughs> but I, I, it looks nice. I'm not going to lie. It looks fun. It's a nice place to have a bachelor party. It, yeah. A bachelor it, party, all, all that, that fun stuff. I think that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, you said it perfectly. Exactly. <laughs> definitely, definitely. All right, before we head to break, it's time to look at today's Look who's eight. So we got a couple of birthdays today, Jeremy. Our first one is to Violet. She's turning eight today. Now, Violet loves her dog, Maverick, and loves to make bracelets and play Mario Kart Battle Rounds. Happy eighth birthday to Carter. Carter enjoys swimming pizza, spaghetti, and sometimes he likes his baby sister. Likes all the good foods there, too. And if you know a special someone that is turning eight months, eight years, 18, 80, or 88 years old soon, we'd love to feature them. That's right. Just upload their photo to our website, news8000.com, and look for the submit for submit pictures button under the home tab on our web website. Stay with us. We have everything you need to know today in five minutes or less. Your morning news now is up next. June is National Dairy Month to celebrate Governor Tony Evers visited Organic Valley's Chaseburg Creamery. Evers, Evers and Organic Valley leaders say it's important to recognize the farmers who provide the state economy billions of dollars. Well, you know, at Organic Valley, we've got 1,600 small family farms as part of our cooperative. And so June Dairy Month is really important to us because it's a time to pause and celebrate all the great work that they're doing. Frank says Chaseburg Creamery services around 400 farms in the area, bringing in around 4.5 million pounds of milk per week. On Alaska's Parks and Rec Department is considering several ways to revamp the city's community center. The city's Parks and Rec Director says the board wants to turn the center into a multi-generational facility. The nearly 50-year-old building is the city's most heavily rented space on weekends. The city set aside roughly $500,000 in its budget to get a design plan going on the facility. The city could decide to remodel the existing building and restrooms or even build a new gymnasium. The city doesn't have any indoor uh, gymnasium space in the winter months and so trying to find a space that really could be utilized uh, you know 12 months a year 
uh, by multi, multiple generations. We just like to try to find a space that we can manage and you know that we, the seniors can use in the mornings and we can use it from a lot of our recreational programs in the afternoons. The board didn't decide on a course of action yet. They'll present plans to Common Council next month, who will discuss future funding options from there. There's a community effort to help create better habitats along Lake on Alaska's shores, as well as give boaters access to business on the water. The Bryce Prairie Conservation Association is working on a plan to dredge the lake near Red Pines Bar and Grill. The project will clear the way for boats as well as create animal habitats. What the dredging will do is increase the depth and provide overwintering habitat for, for fish. So that is something that is sorely needed on the lake. The project would also create a sediment trap which would give fish a place to lay eggs. The association's goal is to raise $200,000 for the project. We'll have a link to donate on our website. And the setup for lacrosse tradition is underway in Riverside Park. Riverfest kicks off later this week and volunteers have started getting the area ready for Friday. Festival attendees can look forward to live music, fireworks and beer and food stands. There will also be a gaming truck with virtual reality simulators and the latest games from Xbox and PlayStation. To celebrate Riverfest hitting a milestone anniversary this year. Organizers say they're opening the fest to everyone. Yeah, and for the fourth, we're not going to require a button this year. Uh, so with it being our 40th anniversary, we want to try to get as many people down here to celebrate with us. Entry on the 4th will be free to the public. Riverfest is a five-day celebration this year. The opening ceremonies will start Monday at 11 in the morning. A heads up for swimmers in lacrosse, the city's Parks and Rec Department has announced that the Northside Community Pool is back open. The pool will resume their regular op uh, operation hours from 1 to 5 p.m. And as you head out the door this morning, be aware of those air quality alerts. They're still in effect here for Wisconsin until noon on Thursday. We're still dealing with that smoke from the Canadian wildfires that is causing the unhealthy conditions for those of you that fall under the sensitive group. It's also impacting our skies too, creating some pretty hazy conditions from City Cam 8, as you can see there in the background. But other than that, our weather is going to be looking at with a mix of sun and clouds today highs into the 80s, upper 80s and low 90s really throughout the rest of this week with a chance of showers and thunderstorms tomorrow through Friday. So not a bad week overall, just a chance of storms. Yeah, just a chance of storms. We do definitely need the rain as far as the drought conditions that we're currently in, so anything is definitely beneficial. Obviously don't want lightning, that could cause some fire issues with some of the dry conditions on the ground. So we'll keep our eyes on it and stay tuned here to First Warm Weather as uh, there is a chance of some possible strong severe storms tomorrow night. But at least going into the 4th, it will be nice. Yeah, we'll have to watch out for 4th of July. Right now, I do have a thunderstorm chance, but I think for the most part, it should be okay. Yeah. Not a washout yet. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll monitor it here over the next several days. Let's hope not. <laughs> Thank you for watching News 8 Now. Don't forget to keep up with the news of the day on News8000.com. We'll see you back at 12.